it is time for the you know the moment everyone in Walmart has been right. waiting for because they want to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. about the story of the week. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Ralph. Mike. Yes. The story of the week. Yes. Is headlined. Former Choate headmasters resign as life trustees in wake of investigation, and it's a story that um, I think, unfortunately, uh, has not only been covered by the Record Journal, but has almost uh, put Wallingford on the map of the news, so to speak. It's gotten a lot of national attention. New York Times for one. New York Times for one. Yeah. Um, I was as I was going on my phone and. I was amazed the national spy, spy, uh, websites that picked up reports of it. The article starts off, uh, in the wake of, re of a recent investigation indicating several former Choate Rosemary Hall administrators failed to report sexual abuse of children to authorities dating back to the 1960s, former Choate headmasters Charles Day and Ed Edward Shanahan have resigned as life trustees of the school. Um, there's a quote here from a Choate spokeswoman. We thank Mr. Day and Mr. Shanahan for their contributions to the school, and we believe their resignations are important steps in our community's healing process. And that's Choate spokeswoman Lorraine Connolly. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was that alumni uh, had begun petitioning the school to remove Day and Shanahan uh, shortly before um, they turned in their resignations. Yeah, now this position as life trustee right. is an honorary, it's an honorary position. position. So, um, it, it, yeah. I, I want to ask you um, what you know, if anything, about uh, the reporting of the story, how difficult it was to report, was Choate forthcoming, um, was it just any, any unusual challenges given the fact that, you know, Choate is a powerful force in the community, it's a sensitive topic, you know, things like that. No, Choate was very forthcoming about the report okay um and i don't i don't think the reporting has been difficult in fact i'd say that there have been much more minor issues in the past involving cho yeah where the, the reporting was difficult but that was a, a decision that cho made as a part of a, a strategy yeah. i don't mean to they're entitled to their strategy um, in terms of the public relations of this story. There was this uh, lengthy report, I think it went to 40 to 50 pages, yeah. that Choate Commission, I think it was a law firm that right. uh, has an, a specialty in, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, they put out the report. I, I found something on page 41 yeah. that I yep. wanted to read to you and the viewers, and it, it sort of exemplifies the, one of the problems uh, that institutions are facing. Um, it goes like this, Choate did not report the assault uh, to any uh, government authorities at the time. I, I guess we should, j let me just stop here and remind right. our viewers, everyone I think probably knows, uh, going back in history to the 60s, some Choate staff um, uh, was accused of you know, sexual assaults Absolutely. or improper uh, conduct with, uh, with students. So that's the context of this. Right. Choate did not report the assault. And when I say the assault, they're going through various cases right. in this report. Right. Um, and um, there's commentary or, or there's, um, reporting, I guess, on each individual case. So I'm taking one of these cases that, right. that the authors of the report are talking about. Um, Shanahan said that he was usually guided by parents' wishes regarding whether to make such a report to government authorities, the police, right? right. In our conversations with student 22 and her parents, they generally commended the school on its handling of the situation but with hindsight, believe that the incident should have been reported to authorities. Student 22's parents recalled being concerned about their daughter's privacy, but did not recall discussing with the school whether the assault should be reported. So the issue which we're seeing society-wide is sexual assaults, whether it's on athletic teams, yeah. and the issue is should the victim, the student reported, and maybe risk getting ostracized or kicked right. off the team or getting the beloved coach in trouble. So right. many times we're learning they don't. In the military, they're having the same big problem, thousands of sexual assaults in the military. Some are reported. Uh, I think more and more they're, they're being reported. But every, everything I've read saying says that the sexual assaults in the military are underreported, probably at, at schools. And, and here we go. Um, I certainly don't don't blame the parents for wanting to keep their 
child's name out of the papers. However, I think the police are very sensitive and were sensitive to keeping minors' names out of this. I think they could have worked something out, and yet, the, you know, the predator went on to teach, a, you know, another day. Just the problem, I don't have the answer to, but, but your, no. your thoughts on well, it. Well, my thought, your, yeah. your point about victims being yeah. worried about being embarrassed to report being victimized is a good one, and, and, and it does exist. And, um, but the other issue that really jumps out on this Choate story is that in the public sector, at least, or at least outside of Choate, um, if a 17-year-old student walks into a principal's office and says there's, they've been sexually assaulted by a staff member, there's no, and we read other warrants, there's no hesitation about what to do next. It's a criminal matter. Yep. You call the police. There's not consultation with anybody. Um, and that was what is really different about this Choate story. And, and I understand as you read the report, they're trying to add in, well, you know, Mr. Shanahan consulted with the parents who were generally happy about how th your role as, as an administrator when a crime is reported to you is to call the police department. And, Have it properly investigated. And in, in fact, state yep. law clearly says that, that people like principals and, and there are others who are considered mandated reporters they don't have a choice. If they don't report, they face criminal charges themselves. The question that, at least in my own mind, is not fully answered by all this openness from Cho is there were people who I believe were mandated to report and didn't report. And what's going to happen to them now in the case of two retired headmasters they've been forced to give up a ceremonial position in some people's eyes that's not a whole lot it's not a whole lot in my view also right what we're talking about is at least 12 faculty members over a period of 50 years that they were aware of and apparently multiple administrators inside that institution didn't follow the law and are they going to pay a price? Um, based on my reading so far, it doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. Well, just a, a final rhetorical question as sure. a matter of policy here. So mm -hmm. who, should have the, who should have the final decision whether this gets reported? Uh, is it the parents? Is it no. the institution, whatever, right. pr public or private, uh, as soon as they – or is it the state legislature? It's a trigger that you can't not pull – when you learn about a sexual assault on a minor. Absolutely. And, yeah, it's an and, automatic. You've just got right, to do it. It's not that any of us aren't empathetic to a parent. You're in charge, like Mr. Shanahan was, you're in charge of all the students. Yeah. And when you don't report something to the police, you now have placed other young people in danger. So th th that's why I might feel exactly how these parents feel, but it's for professionals to almost rise above those things. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a matter of criminology, which I right. don't know a, a lot no. about, but I, I, I have read that the greatest deterrent to, to crime, and this would be you know, included, is the fear of apprehension. Mm -hmm. So if a perpetrator, I'll use that word, if a perpetrator knows that if he, he or she engages in this kind of conduct, there's an automatic trigger. The police are going to be notified, Absolutely. and there's going to be investigation. Maybe that's an additional deterrent, um, you know, rather than the old, the old style. Maybe they can game the system and get a new yeah. job and agree to resign and move on. Uh, you know, maybe that, uh, uh, in the perpetrator's minds, thinks that they think that maybe they can get away with this, where if they know automatic police investigation, maybe that's a bigger deterrent. I don't know. Just, I agree. Just raising it, it. But it wasn't there at Choke. No. It wasn't. Can you imagine yeah. if this was 12 students abused in the Wallingford public school system over a 50-year period, and, yeah. and this same narrative was shown to the public? Yeah. I mean, they would be calling for blood. Blood.